Hi folks, and welcome to episode 8 of Live Cook with Chef Laziwe Matloha. Firstly, a special thanks must go to Westgrow, who is co headline sponsor of this episode, but also has been integral in getting Cape Town as a member city of the Great Wine Capitals Network. This is a network of several international cities that are globally recognized for their wine producing regions. Each year, it holds a competition to assess the best in wine tourism, and it invites wine producers within each of those member cities to apply um, with seven awards related to tourism up for grabs. This year, a big congratulations must go to the four uh, winners from the Cape Winelands who took home the seven awards for 2021. Firstly, Lamont, who won three awards, Delegraaf, who won two of the awards, Lanzarac, who won one award, and then Creation, who won the final award. Lomot is a, a must-visit destination in Franchuk. Besides from its stellar wines and its top-class restaurant, um, it boasts hiking trail, um, a, a shop, and a museum which hosts um, its collection of art, more specifically the Pierre Neff collection, which is well-known and well-admired um, by, by many. Delegraaf is situated in Stellenbosch on the Hills Hoogte Pass, it's another heavy hitting tourist destination with beautiful views and gardens uh, interspersed with sculptures, the like of which are from Dylan Nurse. It has two restaurants, a spa, uh, a shop and beautiful accommodation. Lanzarac um, was established in 1692 and is a historic landmark and Stellenbosch icon, rich with heritage. It boasts amazing views, has a hotel, a deli and various dining options. Creation, located in the cooler Himmel and Arda, um, has incorporated innovation into its vision and through this has a particular focus on sustainability and social upliftment. Besides its sought after wines and its restaurant, it is accommodation, a shop and an art exhibition. Well done, I think it's amazing being able to demonstrate your prowess to ghost judges, especially in these uncertain times. And finally, some insight into the Pongra you would have found in your box of goodies. Um, it's named after a guy called Desiderius Pongra, who was a hung Hungarian immigrant, came to South Africa and he helped revolutionize the growing of grapes in South Africa. Um, he produced a book called Practical Viticulture in 1978, which is still being used by some students today. He also was integral in getting um, the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir clones imported into South Africa from Champagne. So quite a character, and um, Pongra is one of uh, South Africa's most recognized uh, and most popular MCCs. And when I taste it, I often get green apples and brioche, which sounds like it should be a very good pairing with, um, with the meal that you're making tonight. So enjoy your cooking and have a wonderful evening. Here's cheers from Harry. Good night. Celebrating innovation and excellence in wine tourism throughout the greatest wine regions in the world, Westgro extended a call for applications across the province for wine producers and wineries to enter into the esteemed Great Wine Capital's Best Wine Tourism Awards 2021. This annual competition is designed to reward the wineries in each of the Great Wine Capital's Global Network's member cities for the excellence in these seven different categories. The Great Wine Capitals Network is the only wine tourism organisation of its kind in the world. Cape Town and the Western Cape is one of the top wine producers in the world and we welcome relationships that assist us in increasing our global footprint for our quality wines. I first want to congratulate Cape Town and the Cape Winelands for their joining back the network earlier this year. Thank you to the city, the Cape Winelands District Municipality, Westgrove, Vinpro and Wines of South Africa 
for their investment in the promotion of the wine tourism industry. And I do want to already congratulate all the winners. Those winners will now enter the international competition. Our jury will meet early November and the results will be unveiled by mid-November. And I'm very much looking forward to the future when I'll be able to visit you and your beautiful country again. Cheers. The awards for arts and culture, wine tourism services, and sustainable wine tourism practice adjudicated by Margie Biggs, Spencer van Damier, and Shelley Fuller went to Lamotte Wine Estate. The award for accommodation adjudicated by Mbolelo Tedinzende went to Lanzarek Hotel and Spa. The awards for architecture and landscape and wine tourism restaurants adjudicated by Dr. Liandam Pashwa and Jenny Handley went to Delegra. <laughs> and lastly, the award for innovative wine tourism experiences adjudicated by Ilana Clayton went to Creation Wines. Well, welcome folks to episode eight of the Live Cook Channel. As usual, I'm your intrepid host, Pete Goffwood. And you know, I have to bear with us this evening. We've got something a little unusual, but it's certainly going to be a fun evening. Um, we have hopefully, very, very hopefully, going to be cooking with a very, very talented young chef in Johannesburg. She is setting the world ablaze. She's got a fantastic YouTube channel, and she really is doing some great work. Um, so hopefully, and I say hopefully because we're having some terrible storms in Johannesburg at the moment, but I see we do have a picture. So I'd like to welcome to, uh, to our screen and to the Live Cook channel for the first time, Niziwe Vitola. How are you, Niziwe? How's it going up in Jobo? I'm um, awesome, Shafiq. I am excited to be here. Great stuff. I think... Um, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to, particularly over lockdown. I know your YouTube, uh, your YouTube um, channel is taking off, and you're doing all sorts of fab things. Uh, Shafit, I miss that because I am working at home. I have a lot of kids. One of them was making a lot of noise. Please, if you hear kids <laughs> screaming and fighting over the toy, apologies. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Look, I think I think let's get into it. We've got a fantastic evening ahead of us, um, and I think I think we're going to get some great food. Um, just a couple of things before we jump in. There were two things that you asked people to do before we start cooking. Can you run us through what those were? So, folks, the first thing to do is um, you're going to um, take a large glug of your pongrat. <laughs> I'm going to guide you through presenting and cooking for, for most of today because we seem to be getting, the storm seems to be getting the best of us. So, before we crack off, the first thing is you need to have soaked your dried fruit in some warm water for about 15 minutes. Um, not a train smash, just softens it up and makes it more pliable and easier to work with. Um, and then you need to have switched your oven on to 200 degrees already. So, if you've got those two going, I think we might... Um, leap straight into the recipe. Before we do, um, uh, we have a couple of thanks. And the first is a big thank you to the Cape Dried Fruit Packets, who have gifted us with these delicious dried fruits and nuts. And they are South Africa's second largest exporter of dried Cape tree fruit, shipping a third of the country's total production to overseas markets. Those are the ones that you'll be soaking the prunes and the lovely apricots. And we also have some pecans for our stuffing. And we've got some um, flaked almonds that are going to go into our rice later. And as you saw me, and I'm going to do this to make this official, you will also, those of you who are following um, online um, are having a great time, but those of you who bought a basket, now is the time to tuck into a little bit of the fabulous uh, pongrats that's in your bag um, that came in your parcel. A, a truly beautiful, as you heard um, Harry say earlier, 
Pongratz is an elegant and stylish cart classic composed of two noble varieties, namely Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. This dry cup classic has a wonderful foaming mousse and a persistent bead, with a classic yeast and biscuit character that culminates in a full fruity finish. A crisp green apple and bas bread basket um, aromas really make this one of the truly standout cup classics. And I think it's gonna go perfectly with our, our pork dish this evening. So, cheers folks, and uh, good luck. Fantastic. So we're getting into, so by now you will have got your dried fruit soaking and your oven on the go. So let's talk a little bit about what the dish we've got for this evening is, is a magnificent recipe of a stuffed pork fillet. Basically we will be beating it out, rolling it, making a stuffing with some dried fruit and some nuts. Then we're going to roll that in a little bit of a parma ham and then sort of braise it in the oven with a little bit of cider and some of the juice from the uh, dried fruits. And then we were making a fantastic rice dish to go on, almost like a, like a pilaf kind of salad vibe with lots of herbs, so it's some chickpeas, a nice uh, apple cider dressing, lots of herbs and, some, and, uh, and a few um, spring onions. So I think, I think um, I'm just going to lose the script because it's gonna go crazy. So what we're gonna start doing is get a little bit of boiling water on the go because we want to get our rice on first. So I think, um, before we do crack on, we just got a little thanks. We've got a couple of uh, corporates joining us this evening and the team at Ross Monroe Associates. Welcome and welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time. I think we really have some fun ingredients tonight. So let me go through the ingredients while before we get started. So we have here, we have these beautiful pork fillets. Um, then we've got our dried fruit, which I've already taken the liberty of soaking in my hot water. We have um, our cider and some cider. We have some chicken stock. And then we have some more bits and pieces here. We have our pecan nuts, which are gonna go into our filling, as well as some of our fabulous herbs. We've got some thyme, we've got some sage, and then we have um, an onion and some garlic, which will also be part of our stuffing. Um, we have the beautiful speco brown rice, which we'll be using. And into that rice, we've got some spring onions. We'll do some uh, chickpeas. We've got cucumber that's gonna go into that, into a delight. And then we have, of course, our other beautiful nuts, our flaked almonds. We're just gonna toast those off and finish the rice salad with that. And then we have these beautiful strips of parma ham that we're going to wrap our pork fillet with. Okay, so we have all our ingredients. And just tell you a little bit about our salmon brown rice. And the salmon brown rice is the cream of the crop sourced from 300 top rice growers in the Americas. Speco salmon brown rice takes slightly longer to cook than any other varieties, hence the given yeah. variety. <laughs> okay, do we have Zewe back? <laughs> Fantastic. Do we have Lizzie with us? Or are we cracking on regardless? Lizzie, are you 
Fairly nice. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get our rice on the go. So we've got some water that's been boiling on the stove, probably two cups, uh, two cups of water, and then in goes our brown rice. And say, this cooks uh, a little bit longer than, than most of our, than your regular rice, your regular long grain since brown. So we want to get that on first so we can just let it do its thing and forget about a little bit of salt in there. There we go. Let's get a lid on there. And we'll let that do its thing and we'll come back to the rice a little bit later. Um, we're going to make a dressing with this uh, fabulous apple cider vinegar from Safari. Um, really is gorgeous stuff. Um, and it's, Safari is a brand trusted by generations of South Africans and make all manner of beautiful um, uh, vinegars, ferment, naturally fermented vinegars. Um, and this is perfectly light vinegar. It's not too acidic, ideal for the dressing here. And also apple cider vinegar has a number of uh, very important therapeutic uh, um, properties. So great product that we'll be using tonight. Okay, so before I start the actual cooking, I have to remember the presentation side of things that I must also remind you of. We are cooking live. And please, if you want to join in, send us your comments. You know how to do it. If you've done it before, go to the comment section using hashtag live cook channel and send us your questions, comments, uh, if we're leaving you behind or anything along those lines, or you want to know about substitutes, or anything along those lines, please, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So feel free to drop us a line. Let us know what's on your mind. Okay. So, right. I suppose we best to start cooking. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our onion. So we've got some chopped some onion and garlic, and that's going to be the basis of our... Oh, no need. Do some olive oil, please. So we're just going to take the... Keeping, remember to keep our root on of our onion. <laughs> Sorry, I have a helper is just passing me some olive oil from down there. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so now we've shown you this before, but for those of you who can see on the pan, the thing to do is to always keep the root intact. The root is what holds the onion together. So you want to make sure that you've got the root intact. There we go. All right, and then we just make small incisions. I need water for my rice. So therefore, the onion is still held together by the root. And then we turn it to one side, turn it 90 degrees, and we see finish chopping the onion. Letting the knife do all the work. There we go. I'll do the same with this one. Just nice, even slices. Turn it to the side, and then we have our diced onion. Right, let's just get rid of that. We've got a garlic clove as well. We're just going to roughly chop that. So I'm just going to crush that knife. All right. Now we're just going to chop these with a nice hot pan on the go. Uh, good lashing of olive oil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fry our onions and garlic, and then we're going to add our chopped fruit and our nuts to that as well. So let's just chop our garlic. And we also have a couple of mushrooms, I see. They're also going into our stuff. Fantastic, okay. Let's get these in first. There we go, and let's just, we'll just roughly chop our mushrooms up, just slice them. And don't worry about doing this too neatly because it's going into a stuffing, so you're not really going to see it. So don't, don't sweat the, the details about how neat you're chopping this, just as long as you're getting it nicely roughly chopped. It's going to cook down. Yeah, there we go. Delicious. The onions are. Now, while the onions are softening, I've just taken my fruit and I'm just going to strain it. It's important to keep the liquid that the fruit was sitting in, because that's going to be part of our braising. We're going to use that later when we cook the actual fillet. Right. 
turn that down a bit. Let's have another little sneaky. Okay, so onions, we don't need too much color on these. We just want to soften them up. As chefs like to say, soft and translucent. And so there we go. So we're just letting these slowly fry. We can give it a color on, it's not the end of the world. They caramelize a little bit and just add to the flavor. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to wait for these a couple more seconds, and then I'm going to add uh, my chopped, my roughly chopped mushroom to that. There we go. Let's put those in. Okay. Now we'll just give this a little bit of a stir. Now the whole idea is really important to cook this filling because particularly the onions, because we don't want to overcook the filling, the, the, the pork. Once the filling is warmed through, you don't want that flavor of raw onions permeating your dish. So it's important to cook the onions and the garlic before they go into the filling. How are we doing, Missy? Where? I see we have a back. I but I'm distracted because of the uh, network problem. Okay. So but basically, what I'm trying to I, I, I just have my rice on the stove. I've got the rice on so far, and I'm just frying my onions, garlic, and mushrooms at the moment. That's as far as I've got. Okay, let me catch up with you. Cool. Okay, so that's. So how are we doing, folks? I, I don't see any questions yet. I don't see any questions. I'm just moving away to make sure that you're not getting left behind. This is going to take a little bit of time. So just let me recap where we are at the moment. We've got our rice on, two cups of water with the rice, letting that do its thing with a little bit of seasoning. And then I've chopped the onion, I've chopped the garlic, and I've sauteed that off in a little bit of olive oil. Once we got that nice and soft, I've roughly chopped all the mushrooms and we've added that and this is going to be the basis of our stuff. Okay. So how are we doing, folks? Are we are we keeping up? Okay. And once, what well, the other thing that I've also done is that I have strained my. Um, uh, my dried fruit. So I've got my liquid my dried fruit to one side, and I've uh, just saved that in a, in a little sieve or a colander. So I've got my, my dried fruit, which I'm just going to turn out onto my table so that I can um, slowly start to roughly chop it and add it. Okay. Um, fantastic. Okay. So. So this is really, really getting the smell lovely now. I can really see the onions and the garlic doing their thing. Mm. Again, it's quite nicely now. So I'm getting ready to roughly chop my prunes and my apricot. Add them to the pan. Again, this is an easy one. Um, and it's made much easier by the fact that we've actually softened the dried fruit in, in the water. That's the whole purpose of it. It really gives it a nice softer texture and makes it much easier to chop and, and cook in our stuffing. Okay. Again, don't sweat the neatness of the chopping as long as it's quite fine because you don't want massive chunks of, of, of stuffing. You want it nice, evenly distributed the different flavors throughout the stuffing. So obviously, guys, the amounts that I'm using, I've got a box for four. So if mine seems like a little bit more than what you're cooking, you may well be cooking the box for two. I've got the box for four people. So that's why it probably seems like a little bit of a daunting amount of food that I've got on my board. Okay. Okay. 
I think that's rough enough, I reckon. It's fairly small. It's kind of like that sort of almost like a, that mince pie mixture, that sort of texture. Okay. And just let me, you have to bear with me a second because this isn't my recipe. And I just need to make sure that I'm not missing anything out. I don't want people going, well, why didn't you put the so and so in? Okay, so dried fruit, one of the mushrooms. Very liquid, chop the fruit and add the pan, stir in the piquant, season salt. Okay, we're on track. How are we doing out there, folks? Are you are you are you are you with us? Are you no? At this rate, this bottle of pomegranate is not gonna last very long. Okay, so I'm now going to add my chopped fruit to my pan. Okay, there we go, just stir that around. Great stuff. Because we've got to just a wet cloth up here. Okay, so that's, whoops. My stuffing is looking cool. I can probably turn that off. That's cooked enough. And what I'm going to add to my stuffing is some of my uh, of my chopped pecanuts. Now these are nice pecan pieces. I'm going to just add them straight in. There we go. This it really is very to be very tasty stuffing. Now we just to finish the seed the, 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 the stuffing off. Just a little season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Go. Get some salt in there. Okay. Now that should do the trick. Just taste your stuffing with a sneaky poke your finger in there because you can't add seasoning once it's in the pork. So make sure it's got a nice flavor to it. There's a nice little bit of salt and pepper there just so you've got it properly seasoned before you get it into your pork. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to wait for a second while everyone catches up. In the meantime, I'm just going to clean my board because we want to start working with the pork fillets next, which is an integral part of the dish and something we need to make sure we get right. Okay. Right, how are we doing? Is it all going according to plan, folks? I'm not seeing uh, any. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Great stuff. Thanks very much. It's a little unnerving because I found out um, at about 20 minutes before we were on air that I'd actually be cooking today. So um, you'll have to bear with me while we get into this. It's a beautiful recipe, but you know, it's like when you're when it's a recipe you've written, you know yourself, you know exactly what's going next. Now I'm a bit like you guys. I'm kind of continually checking the recipe card to see what I'm supposed to be doing next. But I think we're going to win. I think we're going to produce a beautiful dish that uh, Lizzie has given the recipe for. I think we're really going to do her proud this evening. Right. So I think it's time that we begin with our fillets. So now I've got four pieces here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut them and then we're going to batten them out. Yeah, we're going to almost make like almost like schnitzel kind of vibe out of them. So what we do is lengthways, cut into it, but don't cut right the way through. Yeah. Because we're going to do what we call a butterfly. All right. So on each one, just cut it down the middle length ways, but be careful, don't cut it in half, don't go right the way through, and just do little incisions like this, so we can, and you'll see what we're doing in a second, we're still going to hammer this out, but again, cutting through the center, but not right the way through to the board. There we go. Okay. And the last one will do the same. 
This is going to be a mighty dish. Uh, I hope you guys are hungry because this looks like it's going to be a, a proper family feed today. Okay, so now we've butterflied these out. So now the, the, the trick comes to actually, I'm just going to move these over here. The trick comes to flattening this out. So what we need is a little bit of plastic, a little bit of cling film that we're just going to put on top. So now the thing to do is we're going to kind of beat this out. Now you can do it, I'm going to do it with a roller. You could do it with a, a, a meat mallet if you had one. Okay, so before we get here, so I've taken each of my fillets, I've cut them in half lengthways, right? We butterfly them a little bit like this, but we need to flatten them out a little bit more so we can actually put filling down the one side and actually roll them up. That's the plan. So I've done that with each of my four pieces. Now I'm taking a piece of plastic and I'm putting them here. And we're just going to roll this out. Well, I'm just going to bash it up. If this is perfect to use a rolling pin, if you've got one of those nasty meat mallets, that's also works perfect. But this does the trick. And the reason we put the plastic on is just to protect the pork. That it doesn't, if, it, if you don't have the plastic on, it'll stick to the, to the, to the whatever you're hammering with and it'll start to tear. We want to avoid that. There we go. And so we should add, end up with something like that, a giant pork schnitzel. So I'm gonna carry on and beat out the rest of mine. And then we'll have a little break and a recap so we can catch up before we start with the stuff. Now, unfortunately, this is where I would leap in and start talking all cool nonsense while the chef carried on doing this. But unfortunately, I don't have that luxury today, so you're just going to have to bear with me. It's very, very difficult to talk over the hammering of the pork. Okay. Another one, as you see, lovely, nice pork schnitzel. Ah, cut up already. Um, okay, so if if you haven't got whole fillets like we've got, like I've got here, and, and for some strange and, and unfathomable reason, you've got diced pork, what I suggest you do is we're going to then maybe cut it into little medallions and we'll fry it in the pan and we'll serve it with a little bit of the, um, of the stuffing on the side rather than try to stuff small little individual pieces. That will never work. So if you've got smaller chunks of it for some unfathomable reason, um, no, are we still cooking the onions? Except once you've added your nuts and seasoned, you can turn it off. So my, 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 my stuffing is now onions, the garlic, the mushrooms, my apricots, uh, my prunes, and my pecan nuts, and I've seasoned that with salt and pepper, and I've turned that off. There we go, one more. This has come out quite nicely. And this pork is a, is a lovely, forgiving kind of a, a cut to do this with. You could also do this if you wanted to do like a whole proper Sunday roast, which I think was what Lizzie originally wanted to do, but we just didn't have the time. And that's to do a full pork loin. That is an absolute beauty idea. Problem with that is it takes too long to cook for the time constraints that we have on the show. So we've adapted this recipe to do pork fillets, pork tenderloins, as they're commonly known. Right. Oh, is 
actually quite nice to uh, to get a little bit of frustration out there banging on these uh, on these on, on these pork loins. So let's get our biggest one now because that'll be the easiest one to demonstrate what it is that we're going to do. Okay, so how are we doing, folks? I'll give you a bit of time to catch up in order that we can um, roll together because I realise this takes a couple of minutes to do to to get to the right spot. Um, I think in the meantime. It's a, a behoove to just, um, you know, do a shameless plug for the sponsor. There we go. Cheers, folks. Yes, Chef. Lizzie, how are we doing? Okay. Am I doing justice to your so far? I, I see that. I feel so jealous now. <laughs> I hope I don't mess it up. That's the problem. I've kind of got everything. I'm just, just no, you're doing great. You said anything. You're doing great. I saw how you, you pounded the fillet with, with, the, with the, the Roman pin. Okay, fantastic. I was taking some, some. Okay, so I'm assuming that some of you may be ready to put a little bit of filling in. And I'm just going to do one, and I'll do it slowly. We'll do one at a time. So we just a little bit of filling on one side. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit of filling. There we go. And don't worry if the filling is too warm. It doesn't need to be cold because we're going to cook this immediately. So don't stress about that. Let's get a... And then we're just going to roll this over. There we go. Now, you can, if you're a little bit worried, you can if you're um, That's beautiful. two sticks in there. That's to keep it in but I think um, it should be okay. But the teacher is not the open stuff. And don't want stuffing left over. You can use it for to stuff a chicken breast with. You could use it for, for anything else. So so don't stress if you if you've got stuffing left over. And rather try and have a small amount of stuffing so that you can completely roll your pork fillet around it, rather than have it all sticking out the sides. Get a little bit more of that in there. There we go. That's our second one. And again, we just roll that over. But the pork fillet okay, is not a piece. So it's going to, there's going to bits are going to ooze out, but don't stress too much about that. Right. Right. Let's move this over. There we go. Okay. If you're worried that you think your filling may come out, get yourself some toothpicks. And actually, just peg it with toothpicks if you think that yeah. might help you. Right. So number three. Okay. Number three. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to roll this over again. So. There. there we go. Keeping it shape as much as possible. And our last one. Keep an eye, folks, while you're doing this, just keep an eye on your rice. You want it to cook till all the water boils out of it, which mine is done. So I'm going to turn my rice off and just let it steam and carry on cooking with the steam. So I've used up pretty much all of my stuffing. I've probably got maybe half a cup left. I'm going to keep that for another night. I'm going to do the same thing with chicken breasts. Do the same thing, cut them open, batten them down, roll them with the same filling, and you'll have an equally good dish with the leftovers. So let's move that to one side. Okay. Okay. Lights gone up. Okay, dokie. Oh, and this laptop's gone off as well. This one. Okay, so we're we're set with technical challenges this evening, folks. So please bear with us. Um, says and Kevin's. Congrats! We've kept the wheels 
keeps the wheels moving. You know, Chef Pete is really having a good time. I'm trying to talk to him. He can't even hear, hear me. <laughs> okay, lights are back up. So, so how are we doing, folks? We, in, in fact, I tell you what I think we should do. Actually, um, before we actually put this on, while people are taking time to catch up, because we still got a few more steps. Um, we've got to season these, we've got to roll these further, but I think this is probably the most labor-intensive um, uh, uh, part of the mission. And I, I think we want to let everyone catch up. So perhaps um, while everyone's catching up, I'd like to see congratulations out to the Western Cape winners of the prestigious Great Battle Battles by 2021. Let's find out a little bit more about Cape Town and the Western Cape's top vineyards and culinary experiences. Celebrating innovation and excellence in wine tourism throughout the greatest wine regions in the world, Westgro extended a call for applications across the province for wine producers and wineries to enter into the esteemed Great Wine Capital's Best Wine Tourism Awards 2021. This annual competition is designed to reward the wineries in each of the Great Wine Capital's Global Network's member cities for the excellence in these seven different categories. The Great Wine Capitals Network is the only wine tourism organisation of its kind in the world. Cape Town and the Western Cape is one of the top wine producers in the world and we welcome relationships that assist us in increasing our global footprint for our quality wines. I first want to congratulate Cape Town and the Cape Winelands for their joining back the network earlier this year. Thank you to the city, the Cape Winelands District Municipality, Westboro, Vinpro and Wines of South Africa for their investment in the promotion of the wine tourism industry. And I do want to already congratulate all the winners. Those winners will now enter the international competition. Our jury will meet early November and the results will be unveiled by mid-November. And I'm very much looking forward to the future when I'll be able to visit you and your beautiful country again. Cheers. The awards for arts and culture, wine tourism services, and sustainable wine tourism practice, adjudicated by Margie Biggs, Spencer Van Damier, and Shelley Fuller, went to Lamotte Wine Estate. The award for accommodation, adjudicated by Mbolelo Tedin Zende, went to Lanzarek Hotel and Spa. The awards for architecture and landscape and wine tourism restaurants, adjudicated by Dr. Liandam Pashwa and Jenny Handley, went to Dele Graaf. And lastly, the award for innovative wine tourism experiences adjudicated by Ilana Clayton went to Creation Wines.
Yeah. Right, and we're back. Fantastic. Okay, folks. So I think we should have Lizzie on the line, who's going to um, tell us um, and take us through the rest of the cook. How are we doing up there, Lizzie? Lizzie, where we finally got we finally hold of you. Um, how, how are things doing? Okay, Pete. Uh, it's just my luck. It's just my luck. I didn't receive a fillet. That is why I was asking how many fillets do you have? Seems like you okay. have three, and uh, a fillet that is cut into cubes, so it's a stew. I understand that some people who also receive it. So I'm gonna improvise. We're gonna cook this other ingredients and create. Uh, so something okay, fantastic. So you can use the same ingredients. What did you have in mind? Those who have going to do it, I'm just going to create and I use the same ingredients. So those who are with me who have the same card. I would like a spoon of oil, and then I'm going to add the meat and brown it. And then I need to. Okay, I hope everybody's here. Who's that, that part? I'm sorry about making a fillet. I would have a fillet. I stuck the fillet. It is a fillet. Big chunks. I would have to cut them. Down. My steak, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to cut it in small. So you're going to use, so you, you're going to use the same ingredients, the onions, the garlic, the dried fruit to make a, a little bit of like a stewy saute kind of vibe. I'm going to use the same ingredients. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that you're going to brown the, 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 the fillet. You brown it, then you're going to remove it. And then we're going to fry the onion and put the garlic in the onion we have some garlic i think it's for the rice i think i need it now i'm okay if you have mm -hmm. extra garlic please uh let's pop that up after you need to brown this is medium to high my pen is on medium to high because now i'm trying to catch up and yeah <laughs> and improvise yeah that's what we like to hear fantastic ingredients so we should be able to come up with an alternative dish without too much problem. Okay, so remember folks, please. We'll have something to eat, regardless. Fine. And it's going to be yummy. Cool. Fantastic folks, remember, if you've got any questions, fire them into us and we'll see if we can solve the problem as we work. I want to keep it a nice live cook-off. And I'm sure the DW is not the only one who ended up with with cubes of pork fillet right the whole pieces I did. So here is the second recipe, two recipes for the price of one this week, folks. What a bonus. And we're not even going to charge you extra for it. We're getting the second recipe free. You can give me a fish and put it here so I can throw away the, the bread in there. And then I have to get it out of the kitchen. <coughs> So I see chicken chopping, garlic chopping, pork browning, and it's turning into what sounds like it's going to be very, very tough. Okay, you're going to turn your meat and brown it all around. Mm -hmm. I'm browning my meat all the way around. Are there people who received gonna... to this cut? How many people have received to this? The, 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 the stew? Are there people who received to this? 
two pieces. Put your hands up first. Thank you. Okay, my meat is brown. I'm going to remove it. Okay, I guess everybody has finished uh, with their rice. So yeah, what I'm going right. to cover is the, the top. Okay. Well, before you before you get cracking with that part of it, Aziba, I'm going to just finish off my rolled ones while you get the rest of your bits and pieces in the pan. You've got your onions and garlic going in the pan, and are you going to add the rest of your dried fruit to that? So what I'm going to do with the rest of mine is, first of all, I'm going to give it a little season with our fabulous Heinz barbecue sauce, barbecue spice, just to give it a little hint of something special. There we go. I'll tell you a little bit more about the Heinz special spice blends that are available, beautiful stuff. Um, once I've got my my uh, my pork in the oven, so I'm just giving it a little salt and pepper as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my palm of ham to roll these up. So I've got some dubious looking slices of palm of ham here. I'm just going to use maybe three slices per. I'm just going to put my pork fillet onto that and then wrap this up. There we go. Now I'm going to put it with the, the side of the flap underneath so that it stays rolled up. Okay, and I'll do that again with the last one, the next one. I think I've just used two pieces for this. And then we're just going to roll that up, put that side by side. And then one more. We'll put that in, pop that over. Okay. Third one in there. I think we've got space to squeeze our last one in. Last couple of slices of Palmer ham. We'll just roll that up and place that in there. So once we've got that in there, now we've got our liquid that we reserved and kept from the um, from from the dried fruits. We've got our cider in our little pouch. I'm going to pour that together. Whoops. And then we're going to also use a little bit of our chicken stock, or rooster booster as I like to call it. And we're going to snip that. And we're going to put that in there as well. Now this is going to make a lovely sort of braising liquid. Our dried fruit, water, our our, our um a lovely cider and a little bit of chicken stock. And I'm just going to pour this into the pan. And what this is going to do is that it's going to help steam the pork so it cooks nicely. And it's going to soak up all of the pork juices and have a lovely sauce that we can finish with afterwards. So I'm just going to cover this in uh, some tin foil and I pop this into our oven that we had at 200 degrees. All right, keep working. We'll put that on. There we go. I'm just going to pop this in the oven and forget about it. And then we'll go back to Liziwe and she's going to finish off her pork dish. This is going to go into the oven at 200 degrees. Right, how are we doing on your side? I see you've got your onions and, and your garlic in the pan. I'm just going to slowly clean down on this side. Right, so Lizzie, how are we doing there? What, what, have you, what, what have you got so far? Okay, so we've got some garlic going in there. So we're just grating the garlic into the into our pan with the onions. Fantastic. Did 
Ignacio, if you would just walk up. Okay. Okay. I'm okay, so uh, uh, just cooking. I am just cooking my garlic for less than a minute, and then I am adding the meat back into the pan. Okay, I am happy with that. I'm going to add the meat back into the pan. My pama ham, I'm just going to chop it and put it in the meat for extra flavor. Just roughly chop it. So I'm just busy cleaning, getting ready for the rice dish. All our herbs and bits and pieces. Lovely jelly. Okay. So while Lizzie is uh, finishing off her alternative dish, I'm going to start getting my garnish for my um, rice salad to go with. Um, I've got my rice, which is beautifully cooked here. Let me show you this. Bring this across here. Actually, bring it up here. So my rice is cooked. Lovely and, um, and flaky, all the, it's absorbed all the water. And I'm just going to get my pan on, on a low heat. And I'm just going to toast my um, uh, almonds. I should do the trick. Um, it's, I'm trying to think of the best thing about, you know, we haven't put anything into the rice. This is exactly what we're starting to do now. I've got a hot pan on, and I've just got some flaked almonds in the pan. I just want to toast these lightly. And these, this is the beginning of our, of our rice garnish. You can do this in the oven, but if you're like me, you'll end up forgetting it more often than not. And I burn more nuts because I put them in the pan and forget about them. So sometimes it's better to do it on the stove top in the pan so you can actually see what you're doing. Right. Um, what do I tin opener? Dressing. There's no fan here. There's three chopped up. Yep. So I'm just going to open my tin and drain those quickly. Because we don't want the salty brine that's in there into our mm -hmm. flavor. To a, 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 so we're just going to give those a quick rinse. Okay, and we have our chickpeas. So our chickpeas are ready to go into our rice dish. Um, and now I've got some fabulous herbs and a few bits and pieces. So I've got some beautiful flat leaf parsley, which I'm just going to roughly chop. Yeah, and I've also got some beautiful sage, one of my favorite herbs. Now you'll notice with these softer herbs like sage, like uh, coriander, uh, flat leaf parsley, the stalks themselves are not very woody. So I just don't bother picking them apart. I keep the whole thing. There's actually more flavor in the stalks than there is in the leaves themselves. So it's, uh, it's always worth keeping them in. Obviously, if you've got something quite woody like um, um, rosemary, for example, that you won't want to do that. But this, with these soft, softer herbs, the stems are tastier than these. So we've got some roughly chopped parsley and, parsley and sage. Oh, in fact, we've got, we nearly have the, um, we're almost short of the full Simon Garfunkel gambit of herbs here, because we have parsley, sage, thyme, but we don't have any rosemary. So that's too bad. I'm just going to chop that rosemary up as well. I'm going to time up, sorry. That's going to, and then I've got these beautiful spring onions. And the spring onions also give a nice little bit of astringency, as well as a lovely bit of color and some, and a bite to our rice dish. 
How are we doing with Missy Ware? Is she is she winning with it? Taking mushrooms out. Oh, I'm back on my own. Ah, here we go. Okay, back thank you. Okay, I want to see them meet with Heinz Spice. That's if they can see. They're gone. Oh. <laughs> nice to this one, yeah. Yay! Okay. Bye, some spice. And some salt. So I, I, the seaweed is using the same spices that I did, um, and a little bit about our fabulous spices we have that we have in our box today. It's um, thanks to high end spices, the strong one bringing flavor to the meals. Try high end spices barbecue to your next braai, or mix it up in the kitchen and experiment with all the high end spice combinations. There are 17 different herbs and spices. There are high end spices on social media. Or visit their website, hindspice.co.za, for new flavors and more recipes and inspiration. Yeah. Okay, so turn off my almond because they're looking nice and toasty. And I've got cucumber. Across the section here. I'm just going back to my recipe card. Da -da -da -da. Dressing ingredients: rice, da -da -da -da. almonds, spring onions, cucumber. Oh, it doesn't say so. We'll just make that. This is where. How are we looking in your in your alternative pan? This is looking beautiful, Pete. It looks amazing. Here's another uh, recipe. I just came up with another recipe right there. Fantastic. Necessity is the mother of invention. Okay. Um. Maybe if I do a caption of what I did, Peach? Yes, please. Can I do the caption of what I just did? Yeah, let us tell us tell us what what you've been up to up done up till now. Um, she's gone. Okay, so while Zewe gathers her thoughts to give us a recap of the alternative dish, I've just got my cucumber that I'm cutting into a rough dice. I've just cut smaller pieces of it, and I'm just going to run my knife through it, and then just do a rough dice. This is going to be a nice crunchy kind of garnish. It's going to go with our herbs into our rice salad. There we go. This is quite a big cucumber, so I'm not gonna use all of it. Okay, so. Then we've got some nice diced cucumber. So now I've got my rice. So let me get myself a mixing bowl. A nice big mixing bowl. So we'll put here, grab a spoon. And so first things first, I put my rice in there. So this is our cooked beautiful sun and brown rice. It's amazing how people always, brown rice gets a bad rap sometimes. They think it's the, people think it's the preserve of vegetarian, but it actually is very, very healthy for you. And particularly for something like this salad, it's got a, it's got a nice sort of hood and a nice little vibe to it that makes it for us crunchy and tasty, nice grainy um, kind of salad. So I've got my chickpeas, which are grains. We're going to add those. Then we're going to add our chopped herb and our cucumber. And there we go. All that's going to go in. And this going to give this a nice stir. Can help me? I need, there we go. I need some chopped Right, that is oh, looking I need you to try. And, a to this. And, and, and I must admit, I have to apologize. It's something I didn't do at the beginning. And Lizzie's recipe was quite specific. 
And that was about making the dressing to begin with, with the apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit. Beautiful um, apple cider vinegar from Safari. And we give a little drizzle of that and a few lashings of, of local olive oil. And then we'll just get some salt and pepper into this and then we'll finish it with our nuts. There we go. How are we doing for time, just a matter of interest? Oh, it's seven o'clock, what do you mean? Okay, so a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we finish it with our toasted almonds. Oh, I wish you could, well, I'm sorry, I wish you could smell this at home. Hopefully you are smelling this at home. This lovely nutty flavor working beautifully with this rice. And we're just gonna stir all of this in. Now this is a great accompaniment for our pork dish, but this would make a fabulous braai salad on its own. Mixing all those groovy ingredients here. I hope I haven't left anything behind. Um, sometimes chefs are really, really bad at reading even their own recipes. And you end up finishing off and you see there's a packet of ingredients at the end, they go, ah, I'm sure that was supposed to go in somewhere. But fortunately so far, I don't see anything left that we haven't used. So I'm hoping that we got it right. I'm just gonna give a little taste of this so that I can see if it's seasoned properly. Oh, mm, 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 mm. oh. I think a little bit more dash of the old apple cider vinegar, just to give it a little bit of sharpness. Mm. That zero is a beautiful sound. Yum, oh. mm. I may well be stealing this recipe another time too. Okay, Lizzie, how are we doing? How's it looking on your side, Lizzie? Whip? Looking amazing. I am slightly chewing the, my spinach cube. Uh, I'm going to use the same ingredients, all of the ingredients. Yep. So I browned the, the cubes and then I removed from the pan, the same pan, we fried the onion mm -hmm. and the garlic, and then we returned the cubes. We flavored them with some seasoning, some nice hand spice, salt and pepper, some, some uh, fresh thyme. I think the only thing that I'm not going to use in the recipe is the sage. Okay, yeah. I won't be using the sage. I will use the parsley. I, will, I use thyme. fruit and then it's another dish fantastic i think but i mean that's this is what we're all about i think this is one of one of the beauties of of, of being a professional chef and i think when i watch when we watch the master chef in the office, mm -hmm. Thank you. one of the things that's professional from the amateurs <laughs> is the ability to to try and make stuff up as you go along yes. it's looking lovely it's absolutely it's beautiful. Lovely, looking amazing. I am just going to add now my dry fruit with the water. Okay. I'm my stock as well. I'm just gonna add some more water into that. The only, yeah, mm -hmm. the second thing that I'm not going to use is the cider. I'm not gonna not use gonna the use cider. The we'll drink, drink that already. I'm not gonna use the cider. I'm just going to use the, the stock. Yeah. Oh, I can use some of it. Let me use some of it. Let me use some oh. of it. The only thing that we left then is the is the sage only. But my rice, I did exactly uh, the recipe that we had for the rice. My okay. rice, I set it aside, and then now I'm finishing my my pork. I hope uh, people will love it it's just as much as the tenderloin. I can see you're having a good time with my loin there. Definitely, I think this is fantastic. I cannot wait to taste this. This is such a beautiful recipe. There's so many flavors in the rice. And I love the richness of the of the nuts and the dry fruits of the pork. I think it's oh, a I'm beautiful balance. When I read the it recipe, originally, my network. Can I have a spoon to scrape? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Normally, when I do this, this is the eighth or ninth episode we've done. This will be the first time I'm actually going to eat some of the food because normally I sit in my kitchen and the chefs are elsewhere around the country doing their thing. And this is the first time I actually get to cook the food myself. So I'm quite looking forward to this. And I'm loving the smells and the flavor and the kitchen's a mess. And I'm having the time of my life this afternoon. So thank you very much. This has been absolute fun.
So remember, folks, those of you who are watching this remotely and didn't buy a, 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 a ticket, fun to join in, but one of the beauties of joining in and buying the ticket is not only do you get to cook yourself a sumptuous dinner, but there are also great prizes to one. There's always some fantastic and interesting special ingredients in the box, like these beautiful bottle of pongrats that we got today. And of course, don't forget, there are prizes to be won. You know, we do a lucky draw, which Lizzie will announce at the end of the program, a lucky winner just by buying a ticket. And of course, don't forget, we have our plating prize. You've got to take a picture of your food and post it on Facebook, on, on, on Instagram, using hashtag live cook channel. And our judges will decide which is the most deserving of a fantastic prize. Um, and that we'll talk about a little bit later. But don't forget, Instagram, if your food's not on Instagram, it doesn't exist. Okay, so I'm gonna, excuse me for two seconds. I'm just going to check in the oven to see that my pork fillets are doing what they're going to do. Um, thank you, Kate, that's very nice of you to say. I hope you've enjoyed this office afternoon. But I'm just gonna run off to the, off the, to off out of sight here quickly to go and check my, my pork. Okay, we're back. Fantastic, congrats. Cheers, guys. Thank you for participating in the live cook champ. Your, your support is hugely appreciated. So, forgive me, folks. I, I mentioned that we, if, you, if, you, if you buy a ticket, you win fantastic prizes. And of course, for those of you who haven't done this before, you're probably asking, how do I book a ticket? Well, there are two ways. And I think one of the first and one of our biggest supporters we've had right from the outset is Food Guru. Food Guru make it easier to enjoy weekend dinners. Uh, now you can enjoy. Now you can master the art of cooking and order your favorite live cook channel offering uh, your lunch with box through the easy to use Food Guru dot menu application. Bring the household together and get cooking with Food Guru today. So go to Food Guru dot menu. You can book with our next um, uh, chef that we have coming up. And um, we're very, very fortunate to have a very talented and good looking chef joining us next week. So I'm just, I'm reading from the notes I've given this. It gives my great pleasure to introduce to you next uh, month's uh, cook on a uh, need to book cook for. It says here, this chef is, um, is not only uh, humorous, but incredibly good looking. And no one believed that he's only 28 years old. Um, oh, oh, it's me. Okay, sorry. Thank you, James. For doing that i have to give james now 50 bucks for writing that script for me but i will be cooking next time a roast chicken breast with a bacon a chili and a sweet corn risotto so it'd be great to see you we will however have a presenter when i cook so they won't be the calamitous chaos that's been going on today it will be back to our formal with a bit of luck my good friend benny massey will be joining us and he'll be presenting so we're looking forward to a christmas kickoff um, so, and now we have our lucky ticket member, and I can't see the name because my, uh, it's Tabisa, um, but I can't see the name, unfortunately, because my screen has blocked out half of the name. 
Ticket number 39, lucky ticket number 39, Tabisa Max, somebody. And uh, so you are a lucky ticket winger, fantastic prize on its way to you. Um, apologies, on my screen you can't see is a little, my book. And don't forget that the um, uh, food prize of the best looking dish will be announced on SAFM Live with Pamela Montini on her show on the afternoon between one and three on SAFM on Friday afternoon. Uh, a fantastic media sponsor. She cooked along with us last time. She is a great um, foodie and, and loves being part of this and she'll be announcing our winners. So I'm just going to check to see how Lizzie is doing. Is Lizzie, how is your dish looking? Uh, I'm, ju I'm just thickening the sauce right now. I'm using a bigger stove. I have a stove in the back. <laughs> so I'm thickening that fast because my this one is so slow. Right now, I'm just um, um, toasting my almonds as well for the rice. But my rice is ready and my, my pop is ready. I'm just thickening the sauce. Oh, fantastic. I'm just going to pop and then you can run my rice back. Yeah. Absolutely yummy. Well, I can't wait to see how Lazira is turning out. I think she's just reducing down her sauce there. My dish, I'm just waiting for my pork yes. to come out the oven. How did you make the sauce? So basically, what, what sauce is, John, is all of those pan juices as your, as your uh, pork cooks in the oven. So all of that spider, the, the soaking liquid for the, from, the, from the dried fruit, and our chicken stock will reduce down in the pan. What you can do actually is actually, those of you who got your pork belly in, or your yeah. pork, uh, stuffed pork in the oven already, actually take the, um, um, the foil off and let the pan, the, the juices start to, to, to mingle and you'll start to reduce down and have a lovely sauce by the time it's finished. My pork is nearly done. Unfortunately, I'm uh, not using okay. my own kitchen and so at the time when my oven went off. So I've cranked it back up, so we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay. We'll be fine. Basically, uh, uh, let's see where Lanky is asking about your sauce. What what's what, what are you doing in for, for your dish? For my dish, what, mm, your dish. oh, he's asking why I'm saying I'm thickening a sauce. <laughs> Oh, he's asking why I'm 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 asking why I
talk about catching up. On Sam. Um, if you you have the pool, should be on Sam for two on two hundred. Regan, um, you should have asked that question at the beginning. All right, it's not a problem. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop. Um, we'll go do it. Uh, let's just let the zebra carry on. Tell us how she's finishing off her dish. Okay. <laughs> I have to change my plating now. Huh. Okay, I am okay. just going to plate the side by side. Oh, well, I'm just going to get mine out on the board. So I'm going to start plating mine up. I'm going to do not an individual plate because I'm feeding four, so I'm going to get a little bit of rice on the on the platter. I have a little rice salad with my herbs, my toasted almonds, my chickpeas, and my cucumber. Beautifully dressed with my apple cider vinegar. There we go. And then I'm going to slice up. I'm just going to slice in the angle so we can get a full effect of the stuffing inside. So there we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now remember, folks, there's, there's no reason to cook your pork to death. You know, there was a, for a long time, everyone would always go on about, about measly pork, and it was essential that pork had to be cooked well done. Well, through science, we now realize that it's absolute nonsense. First of all, the, 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 the legislation and the qualities of our abattoirs means measly pork never, ever actually makes it out of the abattoir. And second of all, we've also realized through science that any kind of, inf any kind of pork that might be infected, anything in it, any bacteria is killed at 60 degrees. So if you cook your pork fillets or pork loin, for that matter, to a medium temperature, Anything in there that may be residual will be dead and be harmless. And then you will have lovely succulent pork. So what I've got here is my pork. I've just done one, I'm gonna slice up the rest, but purely for garnish, I think we'll just do that. And I'm just going to use a little bit of my, of my sauce that's in my, in my pan, and I'm just gonna moisten the pork with it. You can reduce that right down and thicken it, but I think a sauce is not really necessary on this dish. This the rice is beautifully moist. It's lovely seasoned and dressed. It's got fresh herbs through it. The pork is succulent and the dressing, the stuffing itself is nice and moist. So a sauce is not really, really necessary for this. Although the roasting liquid is quite, oh, it's quite tasty. I must admit, I might just thicken this up and put it on afterwards. But that folks is my attempt at the Zewe's dish. Um, I hope I've done it justice. Lizzie, how are you doing with yours? Okay, I'm gonna start plating. Can I have my sauce? I am done. So, just plating my rice. Okay. It's fine, so you're making me uncomfortable. Okay, I'm going to place my rice in a nice big platter. I hope you caught me when I say I love uh, plating. I love it when everybody just fish for themselves. So that's what I'm doing right now. So, Okay, thank you. Nice. Okay, I'm going to throw in some garnish there. It looks beautiful. For a minute, I was stressed there, but look at my dish now. <laughs> um, Amazing what a little bit of a little bit of job. I'm supposed to see it. Fresh air, it's going a long way. My lovely. Fantastic. 
Nate. Okay. Oh, and so Stu looks very, very tasty. I must admit, as an alternative, a quick fix if you had chunks, you've done a fantastic job as you were of, of, of what would be very, very difficult no, situation to try and think of. Your alternative dish was <laughs> yes. absolutely <laughs> But, but that's how we create uh, amazing dishes, right, Chef? Oh, without a doubt. We, 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 we come up with amazing recipes. Okay. I, I wouldn't. I couldn't agree. I I've made more. Created more new dishes out of disasters right. than out of anything else. Yes. Yes. No network. No meat. But we are here. Beautiful. I love it. I love, I love, I love it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna garnish this. I forgot these now. Okay. Garnish this. Ah, we will toast it on. And I'm gonna put this. On the rock. Can they see me? Can, can they see that? Oh. Okay. Can I see it? Okay, I'm just gonna garnish this one as well. Some nice lime. That looks well, fantastic. Ah, I seem we may have lost this area again. Okay, not to worry, folks. Well, I hope we get it back because that's our program for this evening. Two dishes for the price of one, two alternative. Um, uh, uh, beautiful dishes with the same ingredients. So hopefully you managed to get one of them on the plate. Don't forget live cook channel hashtag. Um, and don't forget to join me uh, live on the 9th of December with my dish. Remember book to cook at foodguru.menu. Until we see you again, may the sauce be with you. Celebrating innovation and excellence in wine tourism throughout the greatest wine regions in the world, Westgro extended a call for applications across the province for wine producers and wineries to enter into the esteemed Great Wine Capital's Best Wine Tourism Awards 2021. This annual competition is designed to reward the wineries in each of the Great Wine Capital's Global Network's member cities for the excellence in these seven different categories. The Great Wine Capitals Network is the only wine tourism organization of its kind in the world. Cape Town and the Western Cape is one of the top wine producers in the world and we welcome relationships that assist us in increasing our global footprint for our quality wines. I first want to congratulate Cape Town and the Cape Winelands for their joining back the network earlier this year. Thank you to the city, the Cape Winelands District Municipality, Westboro, Vinpro, and Wines of South Africa for their investment in the promotion of the wine tourism industry. And I do want to already congratulate all the winners. Those winners will now enter the international competition 
Our jury will meet early November and the results will be unveiled by mid-November. And I'm very much looking forward to the future when I'll be able to visit you and your beautiful country again. Cheers. The awards for arts and culture, wine tourism services, and sustainable wine tourism practice adjudicated by Margie Biggs, Spencer van Damier, and Shelley Fuller went to Lamotte Wine Estate. The award for accommodation adjudicated by Mbolelo Tedin Zende went to Lanzarek Hotel and Spa. The awards for architecture and landscape and wine tourism restaurants adjudicated by Dr. Liandam Pashwa and Jenny Handley went to Dele Graaf. And lastly, the award for innovative wine tourism experiences adjudicated by Ilana Clayton went to Creation Wines. Hi folks, and welcome to episode 8 of Live Cook with Chef Laziwe Matloha. Firstly, a special thanks must go to West Grow, who is co headline sponsor of this episode, but also has been integral in getting Cape Town as the member city of the Great Wine Capitals Network. This is a network of several international cities that are globally recognized for their wine producing regions. Each year, it holds a competition to assess the best in wine tourism, and it invites wine producers within each of those member cities to apply um, with seven awards related to tourism up for grabs. This year, a big congratulations must go to the four uh, winners from the Cape Winelands who took home the seven awards for 2021. Firstly, Lamont, who won three awards, Delegraaf, who won two of the awards, Lanzarac, who won one award, and then Creation, who won the final award. Lomot is a, a must-visit destination in Franchuk. Besides from its stellar wines and its top-class restaurant, um, it boasts hiking trail, um, a, a shop, and a museum which hosts um, its collection of art, more specifically the Pierre Neff collection, which is well-known and well-admired um, by, by many. Dele Graaf is situated in Stellenbosch on the Hills Hoogte Pass. It's another heavy-hitting tourist destination with beautiful views and gardens, uh, interspersed with sculptures, the like of which are from Dylan Nurse. It has two restaurants, a spa, uh, a shop, and beautiful accommodation. Lanzarac um, was established in 1692 and is a historic landmark and Stellenbosch icon, rich with heritage. It boasts amazing views, has a hotel, a deli, and various dining options. Creation, located in the cooler Hemelin Arda, um, has incorporated innovation into its vision and through this has a particular focus on sustainability and social upliftment. Besides its sought after wines and its restaurant, it is accommodation, a shop, and an art exhibition. 
Well done. I think it's amazing being able to demonstrate your prowess to ghost judges, especially in these uncertain times. And finally, some insight into the Pongra you would have found in your box of goodies. Um, it's named after a guy called Desiderius Pongra, who was a hung Hungarian immigrant, he came to South Africa, and he helped revolutionize the growing of grapes in South Africa. And he produced a book called Practical Viticulture in 1978, which is still being used by some students today. He also was integral in getting um, the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir clones imported into South Africa from Champagne. So quite a character. And Pongra is one of uh, South Africa's most recognized uh, and most popular MCCs. And when I taste it, I often get green apples and brioche, which sounds like it should be a very good pairing with, um, with the meal that you're making tonight. So enjoy your cooking and have a wonderful evening. Here's cheers from Harry. Good night. I do my